Thank you, councillors. If you could all take your seats. Thank you. Good evening. I welcome the gallery and the press to the council meeting and remind you that a meet the meeting is being recorded and live streamed to council's Facebook and YouTube pages. I would ask everyone to please turn all mobile phones to silent mode. Please be aware that a hearing loop is available in the council chamber. Staff members are able to assist you with this at any time during the meeting. I would ask that you please remain quiet in the gallery so that everyone can hear the meeting. Anyone disrupting the meeting may be asked to leave. I would also ask, uh, sorry, I'd like to remind members of the public watching the live stream that a copy of the agenda and information explaining council meetings can be found on the council website. Tonight, you will see that we have nine reports in open council and one in closed council, a transparency rate of 89%. <coughs> Reading of the prayer. Could I please ask you to stand as I uh, call upon Pastor Michael Ro Rogales from Berwick Church of Christ to read the prayer. <coughs> Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for our counsellors. We ask that you bless this council, that you would give them wisdom to govern well and a heart that cares for the well-being of the people of the city of Casey. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much. Please remain standing as I call upon Cathy from the Casey Multifaith Network to read the faith statement. Thank you. The Casey Multifaith Network exists to promote peace, harmony and understanding and to do so in partnership with Casey Council and the wider Casey community. We aim to spread knowledge and clarity about what different religions or worldviews believe, teach and practice. We believe that all members of religions and faiths have the right to peacefully practice and celebrate their own religion in a shared attitude of friendly coexistence and cooperation with all other peoples. Thank you, Cathy. Please be seated. The City of Casey acknowledges that we're on the traditional land of the Bunurong and Wurundjeri people and pays respects to all Elders past and present. Apologies. I have a, a late apology from Councillor Rosario. He's on his way here, but guess what? He's stuck in traffic. So he'll be here as quick as soon as he can. Are there any other apologies? Councillor Sarain. Uh, is it an apology or leave of absence? Leave of absence. Do I do that here? Yep. You'd like to move a leave of absence for Councillor Gillich? Please. Okay, so you. moved by Councillor Saray, seconded by Councillor Cristani. Is there any dissent? There being no dissent, that is carried. And they are our apologies. We're moving on now to a suspension of local law. Um, to those in the gallery and those watching, we have a very special suspension of local law, very um, sombre um, suspension of local law um, based on four events. Um, and I would like to ask for a mover and seconder to move into um, suspension of local law. Moved by Councillor Smith, second by Councillor Aziz. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any dissent? There being no dissent, that is carried. Um, uh, I'd like to start first with Councillor Smith. Uh, Madam Mayor, thank you. Um, I rise to speak briefly about the tragic events that occurred in Christchurch in New Zealand last Friday. Um, and, and I believe as leaders of the community, um, our actions um, are important to recognise um, that there are many people in our community who are grieving, and um, whether they be of the, the Muslim faith and others. I think uh, the overwhelming public response to what happened and the grief, outpouring of grief and love and support has been um, amazing. Uh, on the weekend, I had the pleasure of visiting three of the mosques, Councillor, Flannery went to some. I'm not sure who else might have got there. It was uh, the open day for mosque. Uh, and Ian and I went to three and we were greeted warmly at, at all three. Uh, it was fantastic to meet the communities involved, uh, including the um, three imams from the, the mosques that we visited. Um, our goal as leaders of the community uh, is, is not, should not be to marginalise, but to include people. And we have to, we have to present a bigger and a a future, a bigger future and a better way. And we want to stand and walk with and give voice to the people in our communities who can be the target of fear and hate. These people are often newcomers and they are people that often stand out the most and we need to provide platforms for them to share 
their stories and shine a light on their important contribution to our community life, because they are us. Uh, I know I am, and I know many of us in this city are heartbroken <coughs> for the Muslim community, Christchurch and New Zealand. And tonight we stand and mourn with them. Um, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, I think, uh, has shown great leadership throughout this, and uh, I'll just read out some of her words. And she said, What has happened in Christchurch is an extraordinary act of unprecedented violence. It has no place in New Zealand. Many of those affected will be members of our migrant communities. New Zealand is their home and they are us. And I think that if a similar event happened in Australia, we would be saying exactly the same. So the essence of humanity is that we are one and without being one, we cannot move forward. Casey is a very multicultural community. Some people don't like that, but that's the reality. It, it is. We love and it. Pe people have come from uh, all nationalities, all faiths, all beliefs, and I think we live really um, harmoniously together. And as I said, the mosque open day on, on Sunday um, showed that there was many more people, non-Islamic, visiting them than the Islamic people who were, were p uh, paying host to the visitors. And uh, particularly at the Hallam Mosque, um, the tributes there from flowers and cards from just ordinary residents of Casey, children, adults, and the heartfelt words that they uh, put into cards was just um, quite amazing and quite moving. Um, we have a, culti a Casey multi-faith network and um, I'm, I'm the only one that was around at the time um, on council that it took three attempts to get it up. You know, there was a lot of division, a lot of um, uncertainty about it, but look at what had happened. The result is fantastic and tonight we've had our multi-faith, where, I can't see it, wave, ah, there she's Kathy's there, um, the, the multi-faith um, uh, reading every, every meeting alongside the Christian message from someone from the past network, which is just as important. So we thank them for that. Um, I was hoping Weida Tusev is very well known to many of us. She's a young um, Afghan lady, who, but she grew up in New Zealand. Um, she was going to come tonight, but unfortunately she's had a very minor accident. She's assured us that she's, she's OK, but just not feeling 100%. Um, she was going to come tonight to talk about her uncle. Her uncle was killed in one of the mosques in Auckland, and uh, in Christchurch, and um, his, his story is quite amazing. He was, quite, he was an elder, I think he was the oldest of the, um, the people that died on the day. Uh, he um, was a leader in his community, he ran a language school that, uh, where people who came to it uh, didn't pay anything. He covered the cost of, of the language school, he put on lots of events for young children growing up uh, in the community, not just uh, Muslim, but other people in the community. Um, he, he died, he, he actually spoke, it's reported that the accused gunman, he actually spoke to him as he walked in, he said, welcome brother. Um, and whether that's true or not, but that's a story reported in the, in the newspapers. And then he actually put himself in the path of bullets and, and saved his own son. So it was a pretty amazing uh, effort from him and, and Weed is quite distraught about the whole thing. She, she was going to have trouble talking about it tonight but she, um, she was going to come and, but she passes on her apologies. But I have asked um, Imam uh, Dad Delonga from the Imam from the Hallam uh, Masjid or the mosque and he's going to just say a very quick word on behalf of the Muslim community um, and I think we'll let him have a say. He's going to speak very briefly. start with praising the Almighty Allah, God, the creator of the universe. And I send peace and salutations on all his prophets, including Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you would agree with me that our presence this evening is an evident that we are all family and we belong to one global family. And this family is consists of human beings. And regardless of our differences of ethnicities, difference of background, or the language that we speak, or the culture that we belong to, but at the end of the day, we are all one and we are all human beings. And what we always need to reflect on is that every human life is sacred. Every human life is sacred. And this life could be a life of someone that you had the most. 
but he is as sacred as you are. But unfortunately, at times, we see people driven by the inner hatred to inflict violence on others because of hatred or otherwise. As we have witnessed on this tragic event, what have transpired in uh, New Zealand is quite devastating. But however, I would like to say that the Muslim communities are thankful to the officials and the Australian communities and the wider communities for standing in solidarity with us, supporting us in these devastating moments, bringing, sharing, uh, bringing all the flowers and mourning with us. We are really thankful. And also, I would like to uh, request that uh, the officials, I would like to request them that they take serious measures in terms of those who are dividing us whether they are Muslim radicals or whether they are uh, Islamophobes. These two elements are the cause of our problems today. And I guess if we all can eradicate Islamophobes and Islamic radicals, we all will live harmoniously and will not have these problems. Uh, finally, I would like to thank the council for giving me these few moments. I really appreciate. And finally, I would like to request one and all to join me in the prayers. I employ and beseech the Almighty God, Allah, to forgive those who have lost their lives on this event and everyone that is killed unjustly. May the Almighty grant patience to the family. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Could I please call for everyone to stand as we observe a minute's silence um, in wake of this tragedy? Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. I believe Councillor Aziz has three. I'm going to ask him to introduce the first one, please. Thanks, Councillor Aziz. Uh, <coughs> thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. And I, I stand in the chamber tonight uh, on this solemn evening uh, where we've had a very horrible week uh, for humanity uh, this last week. And um, I join everyone uh, in our community, uh, Casey, in, which is Victoria's largest city by population, <coughs> in acknowledging the dreadfulness of the events that have happened in New Zealand. And as I've stated on my own uh, social media page, extend my deepest sympathy to the Islamic community uh, for the friends and relatives that were lost there. Uh, and to every uh, Muslim member of our community, indeed to every person of the Muslim faith throughout the globe. But in this past week, Madam Mayor and the Imam uh, highlighted it very well when he said that there are people of hate speech and people who divide uh, not just our community, but indeed the global community. Um, and in this last week, uh, as we saw the terrible, terrible events unfold in New Zealand, uh, well, there were also um, two other events uh, where innocent people have lost their lives, one in Nigeria and the other in the Philippines. And when our council takes this um, important step in acknowledging uh, those that we've lost and in condemning violence and condemning uh, those who seek to, uh, for whatever reason, uh, take out their inner revenge on the rest of us uh, innocent humanity, then it's imperative upon us to also acknowledge everyone that has perished. And therefore, I'd like to call firstly for a minute silence uh, to acknowledge the people uh, that were lost in the Nigerian attack. The latest report on social media suggests that there are about 120 people uh, uh, met their fate in that particularly horrendous attack. 
and then I will be speaking about two others as well, as I'm sure that uh, all of the members of our Muslim community present here in the gallery uh, would unhesitatingly join me in um, honouring their memory in this way. And I thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Aziz. Could I please ask that we all stand and observe a minute's silence together? <coughs> Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. <coughs> Councillor Aziz. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor, and likewise um, for that um, horrendous and horrible tragedy in the Philippines, where also many, many people have lost their lives. I think it's incumbent upon us tonight, uh, <coughs> in the spirit of community harmony, that we also honour their memory. Thank you, Councillor Aziz. Could I please ask that we stand for a minute's silence? Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. And um, finally, Madam Mayor, um, I'd just like to, um, firstly, uh, uh, in, 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 in the one that I'm about to introduce, um, acknowledge my colleague and friend, Councillor Smith, and um, acknowledge the efforts that he has taken to ensure that conciliation and harmony um, grows and develops and prospers within our community. It's a, a step that we're taking tonight that we haven't done before when there have been global tragedies, and there certainly has been many over the last uh, two decades. And so I'd like to take the opportunity uh, out of sharing uh, in the grief that people have experienced over the years, just to take a further minute silence to actually honour the memory of those that we haven't remembered and those that have got no one uh, to remember them. And I sincerely hope that our council will take a proactive stance, given the lead that's been set by Councillor Smith tonight, that every time there is a global tragedy and we have an assembly of councillors in this chamber as the directly elected representatives of the people of the city of Casey, that we will take a minute's silence every time we need to grieve collectively, collectively with humanity and share the sorrow of those that are simply innocent victims of rampant crime. And I thank you again, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Aziz, and you're quite right, as, as one humanity, and I think um, very important. Could I please ask, for the final time, could we stand for one minute silence to acknowledge all those that we have encountered tragedies over the last decade? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. 
Before we resume the local war, I'd just like to speak briefly and express my great sympathies to our friends in New Zealand, to our friends here in Casey, and also to the wonderful people that Councillor Aziz has acknowledged, Councillor, Councillor Smith. And I just would like to have your indulgence just to read a little bit about a speech I gave yesterday about Harmony Day. Harmony is such an important thing, and it's something that we pride ourselves on here in the city of Casey. It's something that I encourage. It's something that I will absolutely stand, stand up for. We are a wonderful multicultural, multi-faith community, and we love living here. And everybody that lives in Casey says the same thing. The diversity, um, the wonderful um, people that we have here in our community are so valued, but we also value living with each and every one of you. So if I could just read my, a little bit about the speech that I gave yesterday. Um, and this was a staff-driven event. It was so meaningful. We had three beautiful women speak. Um, Count, uh, sorry, uh, Glenn Patterson was with us. Mr Patterson was with us at that event, along with some really wonderful directors and officers and managers. Uh, what we did yesterday was we celebrated the 20th anniversary of Harmony Day. And the speech I gave was that Harmony Day coincides with the United Nations in International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Harmony Day is about inclusion, respect and belonging for all Australians, regardless of cultural, uh, re uh, religion or linguistic background, united by a set of core Australian values. On Saturday, we hosted Experience Casey, an event which celebrates in every way the concept of harmony. Our um, Councillor Rosario and Councillor Smith were th at that event. Um, and uh, I, I'd heard nothing but great feedback. I would have been there as I would have been at the mosque on Sunday, but unfortunately I had taken ill. Australia is the most multi successful multicultural uh, country on earth and Harmony Day provides an opportunity to celebrate this and consider how we can maintain it. And I maintain that Casey is one of the best multicultural communities in Australia. Nearly half, which is 49% of Australians, were born overseas, or at least have one parent who was. In the city of Casey, we are lucky to have rich cultural diversity with overseas-born residents for more than, from more than 179 countries, representing 520 distinct ethnic groups. Over 114,000, or 40.4%, of people currently living in Casey were born overseas and over 122,000 people, or 40.8% of those people speak a language other than English at home. Today, we want to, or yesterday is what I said, we wanted to explore the theme of Harmony Day, Everyone Belongs, and highlight the experiences of refugees, people seeking asylum who live in the city of Casey. And we had some excellent guest speakers who were there to share with us, and I spoke about them, them before, three amazing women. So my message is that everyone belongs. Uh, it's something that I don't feel that we need to say, we need to um, rectify. I think it's something we need to reinforce because I think we're already doing that very strongly in the city of Casey. And I commend our council officers, my fellow councillors, for that very um, wonderful vision and commitment to our community. And I ask that everyone in our community, community uh, commit to everyone belonging. And what I will say is thank you for being here this evening. Thank you for those that are watching live stream. And may these, these absolutely atrocious tragedies not occur in the future. God bless you. And I now um, resume local law. Thank you very much. Confirmation of minutes. Is there, a, oh, actually, oh, sorry, Councillor Smith, you had a suggestion to, uh, what I'd like to do is offer those who would like to leave are most welcome, but we would love you to stay if you want to stay on. So just letting you know, we're just moving into the more formal part of the meeting now. So thank you very, for those who are leaving, thank you for coming. Um, safe journey home, but for those who wish to stay, you are most welcome. Confirmation of minutes. Is there a mover and a seconder to confirm the minutes of the council meeting held on Tuesday, the 5th of March, 2019? Could I have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Saray, seconded by Councillor Jackson. Is there any dissent? There being no dissent, that is carried. Uh, declaration of interest. Um, does any councillor have a conflict of interest or personal interest that they wish to declare? Have we? Sorry, Councillor Aziz, thank you very much. conflict of interest in relation to item 8.2 on smart cities. Great. Um, and the reason it's likely to be um, an indirect conflict and the reason is that um, 
uh, I'm likely to be named in the recommendation as one of the delegates and I'm actually undertaking uh, PhD studies at present on smart cities and artificial intelligence and therefore it could possibly be argued that I may uh, gain benefit out of this um, uh, delegation uh, or, or, and, and trip uh, to talk about artificial intelligence. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Aziz. Councillor Cristani. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to declare a conflict of interest on 8.1. It's in relation to uh, the issue of federal advocacy and my- Is it direct or indirect? So it'd be indirect conflict due to my candidacy for the federal election and there's federal advocacy issues that are raised in that report. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Cristani. And Thanks. at the appropriate time, I'll call on both councillors to um, state that conflict again and to um, leave the room if you would. Are there any, so that's any further conflicts of interest? No? Moving on, thank you. Public question time. Ms Frost, uh, are there any questions tonight? Uh, yes, there are. Through you, Madam Mayor, we have received a number of questions from members of the public regarding C198. Uh, the first question was from Mr Walter Godlewski. The Commissioner may still include Precinct 9, so all of these questions are concerning the uh, C198 amendment in tonight's Council agenda. Council needs to fulfil the missing adequate biodiversity assessment with an aerial view showing a lower biodiversity value. Would Council consider submitting an adequate assessment and submit it to Planning Commissioner before Council accepts Planning Panel's decision on Precinct 9? All the questions tonight will be answered by our Acting Manager, City Planning. Karen Yu. Thank you. The Independent Planning Panel appointed to consider submissions for Amendment C198, which includes Precinct 9, has concluded. Council submitted to the panel that the land should be rezoned to Low Density Residential Zone 2. Whilst disappointed, Council officers consider that the panel's recommendation is appropriate given the prevailing landscape character of the area and the recommendation is based on an independent review of all material which was put to the panel. The panel's recommendation was largely based on the landscape character of the area and that having a moderate to high sensitivity to change. If the panel required further information to form its recommendation, it would have requested this from Council at the conclusion of the public hearing. Second question submitted by Mr Godlewski. The panel's view it would have made sense to include Precinct 9 in the biodiversity assessment. The comment of the panel stating that the panel is not persuaded that there is sufficient justification for reducing the minimum lot size in Precinct 9 at this stage. If not now, when will it be allowed? Thank you. Council periodically reviews the Casey planning scheme and all policies as part of its four yearly review and determines whether further action is required. However, in submitting the Amendment C198 to Council for consideration, it's intended to conclude the process of reviewing the application of the residential and low density residential zones for an extended period. This is to provide certainty to the community and industry who have participated in this extensive process. Third question tonight from Mr Ivan Erda. It is evident that you have allowed newly subdivided blocks of 1,000 square metres in an heritage significant area like Memorial Drive. So why is it that you do not allow subdivision of less than 4,000 square metres in Kasdar Court, which is in the same teardrop of Precinct 5? It is in an area that was only developed in the 1980s compared to Memorial Drive, which should be preserved for the heritage value of Narry Warren North. Properties in Kasdar Court, which is located in a low density residential Precinct 5 of the housing strategy, were not identified as being suitable for further subdivision. Properties in Memorial Drive are not located in Precinct 5 and are in the Township Zone, which is a different planning zone and not within the scope of this amendment C198. C198 seeks to direct housing growth to areas with good accessibility to jobs and services and to make efficient use of transport and social infrastructure and to identify where change should be more limited because areas are further from services, are subject to natural hazard risk or to preserve significant existing neighbourhood character. Further subdivision was not supported in Precinct 5 because of bushfire risk, significant landscape character, moderate biodiversity values and limited access to public transport and services offered by larger activity centres. Second question from Mr Erda. Why, do you count, why does Council bother to consult the community in regards to planning but does not take the majority of its residents' opinions, wishes into consideration? Thank you. 
Councillors consider a large volume of submissions throughout the planning scheme amendment process for C198. Officers have handled approximately 500 written submissions and over 1,000 telephone and face-to-face -face inquiries. Noting that over 20,000 properties were affected by the amendment, it's not unexpected that um, it's not unexpected to receive a range of views and opinions with some of them conflicting. Not all views can be accommodated, but a large volume were addressed through some post-exhibition changes proposed by Council. All submissions, including late submissions, were considered by Council and referred to Planning Panels Victoria to provide an independent recommendation as how Council should progress this amendment. More recent post-panel submissions have been referred to Council through item 8.4 on tonight's meeting agenda and these will be forwarded to the Minister for Planning should Council resolve to support the approval of the amendment this evening. Our fifth question on this subject matter has been submitted by Sek Chu Yo. My apologies if I've pronounced that incorrectly. I had attended the submission hearing for C198. I had answered the Council concerns on the subdivision of my property into two lots of 2,000 square metres. On what ground do the Council refuse me to subdivide my property other than your excuses of 4,000 square metre lot size? Thank you. The submission for 291 Hallam North Road in Dever Hills was considered by Council and Planning Panels Victoria and this property in the surrounding area was not considered appropriate for further subdivision because of the significant landscape character, biodiversity values and bushfire risk. Thank you. Next question was submitted by Eric Vanderberg. What reason does Council have to cite bushfire risk against our subdivision and in that he he has made a number of comments, including one regarding the location of a shell service station that is located directly behind three houses in a court adjacent to the house behind them. State planning policy requires that Council must consider bushfire risk in preparing any planning scheme amendment for land which is a declared bushfire prone area within a bushfire management overlay or that is proposed to be used or developed in a way that may create a bushfire hazard. The policy is very clear in not increasing the risk to human life. This is a more recent policy position of government subject to the 2009 Black Saturday bushfires or subsequent to those. Bushfire risk is one of the considerations for limiting subdivision precinct five, together with significant landscape character, moderate biodiversity values and limited access to public transports and services. The service station is in existing use and development which needs to be managed in accordance with relevant work safe and other legislative requirements. In 1999 when the planning permit was issued for the service station, Council would have been satisfied that this was an appropriate use for that location. And second question from Eric Vanderberg, why is it that some landowners that are part of the teardrop shaped portion of Precinct 5 and is part of the Narriwarra North Township have been allowed to develop their land into 1,000 square metre lots? Thank you. All land in the low density residential precinct 5 of the housing strategy is included in the low density residential zone 1 as part of this amendment. This maintains the sub existing subdivision size of 4,000 square metres. Smaller lots of around 1,000 square metres in the Narriwarra North Township are within the township zone which allows for lots of this size. The Narriwarra North Township strategy identifies that the low density residential portions of the township including the area referred to here as the teardrop area, which includes Kasdar Court, should have a minimum lot size of 4,000 square metres. Having considered the submission of the Kasdar Court Collective, the panel did not support, support further subdivision in Precinct 5. Again, this precinct has significant landscape character, moderate biodiversity value and limited access to transport and services. Thank you. There are no further questions, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Ms Frost, and thank you, Mrs New. <coughs> Officers' reports for consideration. Could I please ask uh, uh, councillors if there are any reports I'd like to withdraw? I think I actually skipped them. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Councillor Aziz. Um, right. Oh, sorry, just for marking, because we need to be moving block. Yeah, just which report would you like to withdraw? Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Aziz. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to withdraw 8.3 and also... Um, 8.7. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Aziz. Councillor Rosario? 8.1, please, Madam Mayor. 8.1. Thank you. Councillor Jackson? 8.2, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Cristani? Thank you, Madam Mayor. 8.4. Fantastic. Councillors, are there any other reports that they'd like to withdraw? 
That being the case, could I have a mover and seconder please to accept the following reports moved in block? 8.5, 8.6, 8.8, 8.9, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to clarify that um, uh, this club is, uh, as uh, Councillor Jackson has said, that we do they do actually need this upgrade. However, it's very, very important that we don't lose this opportunity. And it's not like we haven't done this before, since it's actually more of an are you, are you aware. Yep. We have actually uh, looked into funding agreements yep. or you know uh, matching money. And this the reality is this club needs that $4 million actually you know, um, to do the projects and to actually have this facility upgraded to what is actually appropriate for, for the people yep. that are there. Yep. This is not just about the football club, it's actually the netball club as well and to an extent the athletics club, the cricket club, all of them. Um, so thank you very much, Madam Mayor, but um, yeah, I know I will be supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Saray. Are there any comments, dissent? Councillor Aziz, uh, are you aware or dissent? Well, no, no uh, Councillor Jackson has dissented, so that gives me an opportunity to stand in the chamber and defend um, uh, the recommendation because I'll mm. be voting for it and mm. I'll be saying that um, often in the past when we've adopted this strategy, and Councillor Saray is absolutely right, this is not the first time we've done this, we do it at every election and every opportunity, um, often the opposing party comes back and gives a bigger promise. Yep. And so it's just one way of us in, in KC really cleverly advocating uh, for the benefit of our residents to facilitate these opportunities. And I sincerely hope that the opposing candidate, I've momentarily forgotten his name, but um, whoever he is, uh, that he may be able to come forward and, and make a, a bigger election commitment. And that's how we basically um, that's how we've basically done it in the city of Casey, and um, it's, it's, it's often yielded a fantastic result for our residents, and I think our efforts at the last uh, state election when Councillor Ablett was mayor were in the billion, uh, north, north of one billion, and, and that's a great thing for our residents because the city of Casey has a very finite budget, and without these sorts of election commitments, we won't go very far in a growing city, mm -hmm. and so... I wholeheartedly applaud the recommendation. I'll be borrowing for it to become a resolution, Madam Mayor. Thank you, thank you so much, Councillor Susan, um, Councillor Ablett, and then Councillor Smith. Yep. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just for the sake of um, the audience tonight, we did discuss in pre-council that uh, both parties have been presented with our advocacy campaign. This wasn't on the agenda then. It's only just popped up. So that's why both parties weren't presented this, and it's popped up tonight just for the sake mm. of the it wasn't a, it wasn't an issue by the federal ca candidate and if we were to um, then go to another candidate and say well can you match it which we will do but certainly at this particular point it could mean that um, well I'll, I'm not going to foreshadow what's going to happen but um, I think this is a, a very appropriate way of doing things certainly we've done this in, in this manner before and um, I'm certainly happy, happy to support it. So thank you, Councillor Ablett. Your insight was very appreciated. Councillor Smith. Um, I'd just like to, to rise up. I, I get the gist of it. Um, I'd ask the mover and seconder just to consider adding maybe an extra line, and the wording I'm not sure about, is that, um, that as you just said, other candidates might match it. Um, Councillor Jackson might be able to help me out here, but maybe a sentence that says, we write to all other candidates for the seat of Latrobe seeking their commitment to match. If I was a candidate, Councillor Smith, I wouldn't be happy if I came to Council and, and Mr Wood has been coming to us for six months over this matter. I wouldn't be happy if we um, just proactively went out there. What we're trying to do is attract um, uh, some interest and I know that uh, very often one side doesn't match the other. So um, whilst I agree we should be advocating, I don't know how to articulate this in the best way I can. While sh we should be art, um, advocating for the best outcome for our clubs, I think we um, should allow um, Mr Wood to put this forward because we'll um, be able to notify him tonight. Um, but I also think um, we could uh, put it onto our advocacy. Um. How does that sound? included in their future advocacy. Uh, I'll foreshadow a subsequent motion. I think that... If it's lost? Uh, no, no. OK. Anyway, yeah. All right. Councillors, we all have a different view on this. I think we want to achieve the same thing, which I, I really admire. And um, I just think... Um, I think um, it was a very, very generous um, offer by Mr Wood, so I'm going to put this forward to my fellow councillors. We have dissent from Councillor Jackson. I take it we have a dissent from you too, Mr no, Councillor Smith? No, 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 supportive. Oh, and how about um, Councillor Rosario sums up? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I will chime into this. Uh, and 
I hear what Councillor Jackson and Councillor Smith are saying. However, I agree with Councillor Saray and, and Councillor Aziz, as well as Councillor Ablett and yourself. Madam Mayor, uh, opportunities like this, when they come up, we do take it, and we need to take it. The people of, uh, of Berwick and Edward Flack Reserve as well deserve the opportunity to be able to receive that sort of funding, to be able to receive those sort of facilities. So uh, I agree with uh, everything that's been said. I will support what we have up here. And as you said, Madam Mayor, if the candidates wish to match live streaming. or... live yep. Yes, and, and that's there's a challenge for the Very candidates out there. If they wish us. to match or exceed... Yep. Uh, that commitment there, I'd be very happy to support something up on the screen there for them as well, if and when that happens. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Rosario. And um, Councillor Rosario has summed up. We do have dissent. Could I have a show of hands in support of what's in front of us, please, councillors? And is carried. And oh, Councillor Saray has called division. Could I please ask those to stand in favour of this uh, recommendation in front of us? So. That'll be Sorry. Councillor Rowe, Councillor Aziz, Councillor Flannery, Councillor Smith, Councillor Rosario, Councillor Stapleton, <coughs> Councillor Saray and Councillor Ablett. Those against this recommendation before us? Sorry, Councillor Jackson. <laughs> Councillor Jackson, thank you very much and we do value your input. Subsequent motion, Councillor Smith. Uh, Mr Mayor, uh, Mr Mayor, sorry, I have a cold. I'll just get... Madam Mayor, I'd just test the water. I'd like to move a, an, an extra motion that simply says, and I'm happy to have suggestions from the floor for wording, that, um, that acknowledging the uh, commitment from the federal member for La Trobe, Mr Jason Wood, that we also seek matching uh, support from other candidates as, they be as we become aware of them, because we don't know who they all are yet. Okay, so that's. Um, would you like to provide the wording? Sorry. Yep. Oh, I'm Sorry. Move this yep. amendment. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Madam Mayor. I'm, I'm going to uh, go to Councillor. I'm, I'm happy to second that with a slight amendment. Yep. If yep. Councillor Smith agrees to it, I think it. I think it's a fantastic motion. I think it's in line with um, everything we've discussed in the previous debate about uh, trying to get as much money as we can for our residents. Uh, but I think that it needs a slight amendment to contextualise uh, what's, what's been happening here, and I, I hope that Councillor Smith agrees with it. And that is that we say, um, acknowledging the $10 million which council has received from for Bunjil Place, and now the further commitment from the federal member for La Trobe, uh, Mr. Jason Wood. Commitment. Um, in relation to uh, the. Um, he needs to confirm this overnight. If we if we committed, to, which he will do, because we've committed to it now. Uh, and and the yep. further potential commitment. Yep. Uh, from imminent the, imminent commitment. Sorry. On. Imminent we will do. And the further. <laughs> Imminent. imminent commitment from yep. the federal member for La Trobe, yep. uh, Mr. Jason Wood, um, uh, that we seek a matching commitment uh, from all other candidates uh, that would support. Um, arts and culture in the city of Casey, <coughs> as and, well as and recreation, as well as recreation, <laughs> um, to the tune of twelve million dollars. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Aziz. Councillor um, Smith, are you happy with that? I'm just wondering: Are, are we indicating there that that um, the, the new promise is twelve million dollars? I think we're just. A, confusing the issue a bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, look, I, I acknowledge Jason's contribution in terms of $10 million. Fantastic. No other political party, no other candidate came up with anything like that. In fact, no other promises, I don't believe, from anyone. So, so I'm happy to acknowledge that, and, and he deserves that credit. Um, I'm just wondering about that wording at yes. the end about 12 million. What do you think, Councillor Ziff? Look, I understand where <laughs> Councillor Smith uh, stands, and I, he, it would have to be, I mean, we're creating history tonight because it's the first time ever uh, in the history of the city of Casey where 
12 million dollars has been asked for to support arts and culture and is had doubts about it so this is good this is means that this means that he may be applying a bit of a bit more rigor to some of our spending but i think that uh what we need to do is highlight perhaps uh the two million dollars so if we say um uh that um the matching bit uh would in particular relate to two million dollars but also uh, a further $10 million, as was done for Bunjil Place by the current federal government, uh, to support arts culture uh, uh, in, 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 the, um, in the city of Casey. So perhaps if the $2 million could be identified as being tied to recreation, and the other $10 million would be tied to uh, supporting arts and culture development in our city, perhaps that would provide a clarifying um, exit for Councillor Smith to contemplate. Do we have any he won't believe me, but I will accept that. I think I know. I know. I know when my luck's run out. Um, and and look, as I said, I I, I like Jason Wood, you know, and he's been very good to me. And um, whilst our politics don't match, I accept that he he did something that no one other candidate was able to achieve for us. So so I will go with that. Um, no other MP. Sorry. No other MP. No other you MP. said candidate. No, true, true, yep. exact. Um, um, on the other hand, the reason I'm doing this is because we need to hedge our bets, and yep. I think we all know. That. And I agree with hedging. Um, if I could just respond to that, uh, Councillor Smith, I believe in hedging our bets. But let me assure you, both candidates, or both the MP and the candidate, and and actually other candidates, have been to see us to find out what our wish list is and to present theirs. Neither has been given to the other. So whilst this is out in the public domain, I remember having a conversation with the candidate for Latrobe, who gave me some information, sought my advice on something. I will not um, talk about that information to anybody else. So that is what he came to me. So what I'm, what I'm probably asking for is a little bit of respect for a lot of hard work to help the Berwick Football Club. Because we haven't had this come forward that I'm aware of from anyone else. So I'm just asking for a, a bit of respect and, and happy to write to the candidates, but I think we dilute very magnanimous and phenomenal amount of money and we could actually be shooting ourselves in the foot. Despite the fact I've watched my son lose so many football games at the, that ground, I'll still support it. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I think the resolution or the further motion by Councillor Smith will now need... Um, uh, slightly amended wording to achieve the clarification that he was seeking. And so I believe that we should change it as follows. After the word, seek a matching commitment from all other candidates as follows. Can we go nice and slow? Thank you. Yep. So after yeah. seek a matching commitment from all other candidates as follows. And is that the 10 million and the 2, the two Absolutely. million? Absolutely. Um, uh, so, <laughs> no, come on, you said you supported it. So <laughs> through you, Madam Mayor. Okay, so I think Councillor Smith will be really happy with this. Um, we forgive give him a few uh, contemplative moments. Um, to support uh, as follows, um, a $2 million matching commitment for recreation and a $10 million <laughs> commitment to further enrich and develop arts and culture in the city of Casey. Well, we have got a lovely project that potentially coming up that that would be helpful Excellent. for, wouldn't it? Excellent. Um, second factory, maybe. Um, so if we could just say that, that would be good. Factory extension. <laughs> you are one mongrel. No, don't take that back. No, OK, I will accept that. Thank All you, right. Councillor OK, Smith. this is before us and it's moved by Councillor Smith and it's seconded by Councillor Aziz. Is there, are there any questions? Is there any division? That being the case, that is carried. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gentlemen, we shall move on. Can we please ask for Councillor Cristani to come back in? Councillors, item 8.2, um, and I believe that uh, Councillor Aziz has a conflict of interest. Would you like to declare your conflict of uh, interest? Yes, thank, thank you. you. Madam Mayor, it is at this juncture that I um, declare that I have a, an indirect conflict, and that is that I'm currently undertaking doctoral studies in the area of smart cities and artificial intelligence. And as I'm going to be likely named in the recommendation, um, I'm going to declare a conflict as uh, it could be argued that some of this could actually be benefiting uh, my research. So I'm going to exit the chamber now, Madam Mayor. Thank we do you. wish you well with that, Councillor Aziz, and we'll come and uh, ask you to come back in when we finish with the item. Thank you, Thank you very much.
Item 8.2, Councillor Jackson. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that in my name. There's been some changes made to the original report, so I just yep. highlight that to councillors before. So we've just got some changes, councillors. If we'd like to have a quick look at those changes before I ask Councillor Rowe to second it. Madam Mayor, I might mention that the changes are being sought through consultation with the Governor's Department that have pro provided these changes. You've done a lot of work there. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. So, question from Councillor Smith before um, we second it. Are we intending to try and present a paper at it? Is that one of our intentions? No. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, good. I'll keep out of it. Thank you so much. So. Um, Councillors, have we all had a chance to have a look at the um, alterations? Okay. Moved by Councillor Jackson, seconded by Councillor Rowe. Uh, Councillor Jackson, would you like to introduce? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, since the Smart City strategy was introduced in late 2017, we've been focused on using modern technology and innovation to deliver real outcomes for our community. It includes we started a community advisory, advisory committee, we've done a GovHack gov event here. We're utilising technology through Bundjal Place to provide real-time smart parking out outside of Bundjal Place. We've supported local entrepreneurs for an in-crowd program. Um, we're building a KCY technology um, network. And also, Madam Mayor, it's not mentioned here, but we've actually got a TEDx conference we coming have. up in the city of Casey. Now, um, Mr Allsop might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but um, this is the first TEDx conference outside a major city that we know of. Um, and if you've ever watched these on YouTube, these things are massive. Make no mistake, I think we will sell out um, here when it's going on. Because I think we have. We may, may I have. think we have. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, um, I need to defer that, actually. I, I don't know um, what, uh, where the ticket sales are at. Uh, I do know that uh, we've had a significant amount of interest, however. Um, and I certainly know that for Victoria, uh, I think it's, the, it's certainly the only one outside of Melbourne CBD. Um, I can't state for the rest of Australia. I can look across and I'm someone else might be out of state. I'm very like excited about yeah. Smart Cities, as you can see, Madam Mayor. Um, and Madam Mayor, I think, I think it shows that if a TEDx conference of a Smart City conference is willing to come to the city of Casey, it's showing what we are doing is working. Not just on a local thing, just not on a national stage, but on a global stage. So much so that we've been invited to prevent by one of the world leaders in this space at the Digital Workforce Summit. Give their keynote address, as I understand, or an address to that. So they're inviting us over there. Um, Councillor Aziz, Councillor myself and Councillor Rowe all lead this portfolio together and do quite a bit of work on it. Um, it just so happens um, that from a pre-planned chip, um, Madam Mayor, I'll actually already be in the United States when this conference was going on, and given that I'm already there, um, it would be great to be able to attend with my fellow councillors as well. Um, I think you know we are trying to make a big leap in technology in the city of Casey. We're going from here to here, and it doesn't. Not trying, we're actually achieving. Well, it. We are achieving, but we are we're aiming for the stars, and we're going to reach it. Um, I'm confident with Clint and his team that they're going to get us there. Um, but it's by being with these groups. This is all about artificial intelligence. It's about 24-7. You know, if we want to be the most livable city, what's more livable than getting an answer on the spot no matter what time, no matter what day? And it starts from things like this, Madam Mayor, um, and I commend this motion to the Chamber. Thank you very much. Councillor Rowe, did you want to um, ask a question? <laughs> or... <laughs> Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Were councillors aware? Is that what you would like? Yep. That would be lovely. Um, certainly, uh, Madam Mayor, and I just want to uh, let councillors uh, in the... Um, constituents know that today that we, uh, as part of this, um, we hosted a delegation from China here uh, in, rela in relation to the subject of disposal of waste, the creation of heat, and out of that heat, conduct a creation of baseload power. Now, something like that would almost mean, um, you know, no summer uh, blackouts, uh, because baseload is the key to all efficient power grids. And when we lost Hazelwood, we lost a very strategic baseload power station. It might have been old, it in fact may have been even uh, archaic, but it still did provide some baseload into Victoria. And to have uh, investors from China come here to the city of Casey, because the city Casey's credentials as a smart city, its reputation, not only in this country but overseas. 
and the fact that I've already been to Tasmania and spoke at a conference uh, down there in relation to smart cities, Councillor Aziz, Councillor Jackson did a tour of uh, Australia uh, with the officers and uh, you know observed what was going on. You know, like smart light poles in Adelaide, which is just something fantastic. You know, they rent them out and get money back for them. And the smart barbecue. We can't forget smart the smart barbecue. barbecue. That comes in handy on a good Saturday afternoon, I can tell you, a smart barbecue. But anyway, uh, Madam Mayor, I'd just like to uh, back up uh, Councillor Jackson and to thank Councillor Jackson publicly for taking time out of a very important personal uh, trip to the United States to make himself available to come across because it certainly adds to the power of what we'll be uh, attempting to achieve there. And, and we are, I think, going to Princeton immediately before or after? Uh, immediately after this, we're going to Princeton University and coming straight back home. So, you know, that's uh, going to be a very valuable experience for us all and look forward to presenting the paper in uh, July when we return. Thank you, Councillor Rowe. And, and yes, thank you, Councillor Jackson. I think that's really magnanimous of you um, to be over there on holidays and uh, take time out of your um, your break to um, be able to attend this event, which is really, really important. I was actually at that meeting also this afternoon and so exciting, so exciting at the possibilities, things that we've been touching on, but it looks like this could be a wonderful outcome. And one of the questions that I asked in that meeting was, um, yes, energy to waste, fantastic, but we know it's not going to provide everything that we need. So why wouldn't we, on a an enormous facility put up um, solar panels. I mean, we've got some real opportunities here and very exciting ones indeed. Um, I've got questions from Councillor Rosario and Councillor Smith, and I'll start with Councillor Rosario. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It is a quick one. Um, for point three, uh, you're presenting a paper. Are you also doing a presentation to Council? Uh, traditionally on trips, we've had uh, slideshows, pictures, and, and lessons learnt, etc. I'd more, be very keen to see that because it's more, a, more than happy to, Madam Mayor, and if, with the indulgence of Council, we could add a point four um, that the councillors and council officers provide a report and presentation back to Council. That's fantastic. We're just getting the wording up now, and that would be your idea would be to have it in Council. Um, yeah, which would be fantastic. Very good. Thank you. Good, good suggestion, Councillor Rosario. And that's before us. Do I have leave of council to accept these changes? You've got a question before we accept the changes? Oh, no. No, okay. Um, do I have leave of council to accept the changes? Somebody? Thank you, Councillor Flannery. I'll count your consent. You're going to dissent, so you're not giving us, you're not giving us leave of council to accept this change? Oh, I'll, I'll give you... Thank you, but you're going to dissent, dissent fair dissent. enough. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, um, so yes, Councillor, Councillor Flannery, you're going to accept the changes? Yep. So I'm going to go to, um, we've been to Councillor Rosario, Councillor Smith and Councillor Flannery. Uh, just a quick one, then the um, councillors Rowe and Aziz and Jackson will be interested to know that uh, last night the Arts and Cultural Reference Group were invited to the launch of an interactive display on the Bunjil Place screen out there last night. Um, it's a, a, a first and possibly a world first, but probably an Australian first. Um, one, a, a couple of things we learned yesterday about smart cities. Um, Australia is one of the few, is the leader in the world of having community screens. So screens like Bunjil and other councils, um, we lead the world in that uh, other countries just don't have as many um, screens around like that. Um, the exhibition that was on, it was premiered last night and will be shown again uh, is interactive in that um, when it's on the screen, it's been put together by a number of uh, digital artists, but you can, our officers or our staff will be out there with iPads and, and phones that you can interact with the screen. You can change the look of the image, you can add colours, change colours. Um, it was really quite amazing and, and, and as interactive art and smart cities, again, it was another example of us uh, leading because um, the, the company that's, that runs our screen, um, it was the fir the, the, their first attempt at this sort of work and, and uh, they hope it won't be the last and they're very proud of Casey for taking it on. Thank you, Councillor Smith. We've got dissent from Councillor Flannery. Are there any other questions? Uh, Councillor Flannery, would you like to talk to your dissent? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as everybody realises that, you know, I've always been against uh, overseas travel. Uh, Councillor Jackson said that he'd be over in the US and he's uh, happy to attend. Um, uh, Clint over here is the 
Is the officer uh, probably be going over? How many officers would be going over? One or two? Up. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, the recommendation is up up to two, so it could be one or two. So, Madam Mayor, we have uh, two officers going over there. Councillor Jackson uh, is going to be over in the US anyway. And um, I, I believe that whatever information Councillor Jackson, the officers, could uh, bring back, I, I just don't see any reason why we need to take three off, uh, three councillors over to uh, over to the USA. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll be uh, voted down if, uh, if if the off if the councillors believe uh, I'm wrong. Thank you. We appreciate your comments. Thank you, Councillor Flannery. Is there any other dissent? Okay, that being the case. Um, <laughs> I would just like to go to Councillor Jackson to sum up, please. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, and I accept Councillor Flannery's view on the matter, um, Madam Mayor, but I think trying to be a leader and innovative in change is going to cost some money. We don't, uh, you don't acquire change by sitting back and doing nothing. Um, and by having three of us there, all with different interests in this, um, and all with different skill sets that we do bring, I think we're giving ourselves the best opportunity on not a national stage, but a global stage to present the city of Casey of here we are. Now, who so knows this isn't just a workshop. This, this is actually us telling the, the world what it is that and, we're doing. And Madam Mayor, I'd highlight, we've been invited to come to this by a world leading tech arm to actually come and present. It, we didn't go out and sort this ourselves. So we're being recognised. Um, we'd be loath not to jump at this opportunity. And I support all the other councillors coming along. Um, it just so happens I've got a pre-planned trip there. If I hadn't, I would still be asking to, to go with my fellow councillors because I think you know three heads are better than one. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. So I'm just going to put this to the vote. Those in favour of um, this re um, this recommendation before us, and those against, councillors, that is carried. Thank you very much. Could we ask for Councillor Aziz to come back in, please? Thank you, Mr Alsop. Thank you, Councillor Aziz. I'd like to um, ask for a mover and second um, so that we can move a suspension of the local law until I determine to reapply it. So moved by. Councillor Jackson, seconded by Councillor Rowe. Is there any dissent? There being no dissent, Councillor Aziz, I'd like you, um, to invite you to speak. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, very, Madam Mayor, for this indulgence. And I know this is uh, a bit of a departure from protocol because we don't usually suspend meeting procedures in the middle of a meeting. But following discussions with yourself, uh, Councillor Rowe and uh, Mr Fitcher today about um, an amazing experience that I had on the weekend. Um, I didn't go on holidays, but <laughs> I, uh, I was actually uh, teaching uh, at a university to our north uh, in uh, Southern Cross Uni in, um, on the Gold Coast and meeting uh, with a, a whole heap of people with incredible minds who um, work in the smart city space and as uh, space rather and as i declared a conflict in relation to the previous item i couldn't really contribute to the debate uh, on some of the learnings <laughs> i've had uh, but they are amazing learnings and they're learnings poised for a city that is very very serious about embarking on a smart city's future and um i was basically working throughout the weekend madam mayor with a group of engineers all with phds uh, all researching some amazing ideas for australia's uh, innov innovation and future and um and they shared with me some of their insights as to what the future might look like and um and i wanted to bring a couple of those insights here to the city of casey because um uh, they are amazing and um and and some of them could have um, far-reaching economic benefits uh, for our city and um, uh, pour right into our aspirations of actually creating uh, many jobs uh, to, um, uh, to ensure that um, a lot of our residents actually work uh, in, in our city rather than leave it to go elsewhere for work. And one of those ideas, uh, Madam Mayor, is a, is a substance called Procrete. Um, now, Procrete is actually an alternative to concrete. And um, it's not something that is currently being commercially produced in Australia, 
but I'm told by these engineers that it's actually what the great ancient civilizations used uh, to build some great structures that are still standing, and some of those are the Egyptians <coughs> building the pyramid and the Chinese, the Chinese building the Great Wall. And um, what is amazing about Procrete is that unlike uh, Portland cement, which uh, is very unenvironmentally friendly and apparently needs to be heated to 1200 degrees Celsius in the manufacturing process and pours lots and lots of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, the production of Procrete actually sucks CO2 out of the air. And so it contributes to reducing the emission uh, of greenhouse gases and it cures in a very small amount of time, uh, in about two hours. And so from a strategic uh, defence or security perspective, just say, you know, God forbid, you know, one of our runways um, was destroyed and um, the government needed to repatch that runway very quickly. When normally with concrete it could take up to two to three days, this stuff actually cures in under two hours. It is very water resistant and um, it has many, many other qualities and properties um, that are quite amazing. Now, why do I mention all this? It's because the group of engineers that I met on the weekend actually have the Australasian license to uh, uh, produce and market this stuff in the entire Australasian region. And when I started speaking to them about KC and some of the things we're trying to do and some of the capabilities we have, they actually now want um, to consider the first Australian factory for the production of this amazing substance right here in our city. And so it's something that I have briefed uh, Mr Fitchett about today and in a minute I'm going to be uh, bombarding him with uh, lots of technical specifications and um, lots of marketing material in the hope that we can identify through his team um, uh, at least the start of the conversation uh, to bring this amazing technology to our city and to facilitate this opportunity uh, for these guys. So um, it may be, um, you know, some council land that we're able to lease for a long period of time, or it may be an ability for us to introduce them to the private sector and get them to do the negotiations and and hopefully uh, get 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 uh, some action in that way. But either way, um, I look forward to the day when it is said that the first export of this amazing uh, product actually came right here from the heart of our city. And I look forward to the, to the day when thousands and thousands of jobs um, are created as a result of it. Um, I'll leave it there and Mr Fitcher, thank you for your time today and I, um, I will certainly be forwarding those details to you. Um, the other thing I want to speak about um, is something that might um, uh, perhaps cause a little bit of controversy because uh, traditionally it's been a controversial topic. However, I want to preface everything I'm about to say uh, with a statement that the science has moved on significantly. And the topic is producing uh, resources, particularly energy, gas and water, uh, uh, through nuclear power. Now, um, I know that everybody's probably wondering, you know, how, how could he be doing this? And I know that there are some federal government imped impediments to, um, uh, to this uh, entire uh, thought process. However, um, again, I, I would prefer that the science speak over um, the innuendo, basically. Um, uh, there is no doubt that the technology of nuclear power has moved considerably since those terrible accidents in both Chernobyl and Fukushima only a decade ago. And to put it very simply, uh, the cooling systems that were used in those reactors were basically water systems, so basically um, hydrogen oxide or two bits hydrogen, one bit o oxygen uh, to get technical. And what happens in a situation like this is when you have heating and cooling, heating and cooling, a screaming process occurs, which is where the hydrogen atoms separate from the oxygen atoms, and that's when it goes boom, basically. However, these days they've introduced inert helium to cool the reactors, and um, helium is an inert sub substance, um, so no such accidents or explosions can actually take place. There's a company, an Australian company, an amazing Australian company that is working on um, a product called the Small Modular Reactor, or SMR, and it's technology that they've already deployed in various places around the world 
because it is, it is so good and so effective. And the best part about it is that there's basically no cost to government. The entire reactor is capitalised, the same way that you would go about buying a car on a lease. And the, um, the cost uh, of installing it and operating it actually comes out of uh, people paying their either power, gas or water bills, because it has capacity to uh, generate all three. And the, the costs of those bills are basically less than half of what people are paying now, and that's got to be very, very good uh, for cost of living pressures. And so we're yet some way off, and today we had a meeting with our, um, our, the heads of our planning departments, both strategic and statutory, and we started talking about you know, what it is that you think about when you envision a city in 15, 20 years, and uh, Councillor Roy was present, and uh, it was a very fruitful discussion. We're joined later by Councillor Jackson. But nuclear power may not be the reality today and may not be accepted by everyone today. And as I said, there are some federal government imperatives, uh, rather impediments uh, in our way. However, um, it is probably something that we can consider in the future and something that we probably need to plan for because despite the hysteria today, eventually humanity may realise that that is indeed the only energy way that is actually sustainable for the planet. And so they're just two ideas. Um, there's a third one that I talked about, but I can't talk about it here in the public forum because it is a commercial in confidence project, so I have to respect that confidentiality. But it's something that I had a chat again to Mr. Fitcher about and to uh, some of our colleagues. And again, another exciting prospect. So I mention all these things because Casey is moving in leaps and bounds towards a smart future. And like I keep saying, uh, ably assisted by our officers who are doing some amazing work in this space, we are bringing the future, we are bringing tomorrow to today. And that's uh, by no means uh, a small feat and it's something that we should be ploughing forth with, with every uh, strength that we can muster and every avenue of ingenuity and um, collaboration and, 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 and every single uh, policy direction that we can take in order to bring that future, which is going to be so critical, not only for jobs uh, and, and for prosperity and for livability, most importantly, uh, but also for the future of all of our children and grandchildren as they continue to grow and thrive in this great city. Um, once again, Madam Mayor, I thank you for your indulgence in allowing me this uh, break of protocol to call for a suspension in the middle of a meeting. <coughs> I also acknowledge our officers once more who are doing an amazing job and acknowledge my colleagues, councillors Rowe and Jackson, um, with whom it is an absolute pleasure to serve in this portfolio and I thank you. Councillor Aziz, thank you so much. And I must confess that I had a coffee with you and Councillor Rowe this afternoon, and I was just so absolutely glued to everything you were saying about the things that you're doing, um, the things that you're learning, and the things that will actually benefit the council and what we're doing. I just want to make, be very clear about the discussion around smart cities is it's not always just about spending money and just investing. It is actually um, about doing things smarter, and that may, it may require investment, of course, but it could also be as simple as doing something online that makes it life a lot easier for everyone to um, get what it is that they need. So with that in mind, I uh, resume our local law and do again thanks Councillor Aziz for that fantastic presentation. We'll move on to um, item 8.3, China engagement, Councillor Aziz. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Once again, I'd like to move that. Uh, I'll, I think there is an alternative recommendation being yep. put up. The alternatives in front of us, councillors, we just, just need to get nominated representatives, so we'll put oh. those in first, do you think? Yeah. I'll uh, leave that up to you. Thank you, councillors. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. I would suggest that the cultural and education uh, delegation be comprised of Councillor Smith. There isn't one happening in April. Yeah, I think that's... That needs to come out. The April one needs to come out. Oh, yeah, so no, April, April needs yeah, to come out. So ch and change April to Have June. Have we got the right one? I'll, I'll defer to Mr Fitchett. Yeah, change April to June, Mr Fitchett. Sorry, that is correct, uh, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, the change that's been made to June is now correct. Beautiful. That's it. That's the one we wanted to see. Be great. Councillors, I'll just give you a minute to have a look. 
And also change part three, Madam Mayor. Yes, for the business so, delegation, yes. So Thank you. Uh, that'll be led by myself. And the date is November 2019. Fantastic. Instead of mid-2019? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And four remains as is. No pun intended. Uh, I think we uh, delete four, don't we? No, that still happens. No, that remains. Oh, sorry, yeah, that, there's a business delegation component as well as the council delegation. Yeah, my apologies. So moved by Councillor Aziz and seconded by Councillor Smith. Councillor Aziz, would you like to introduce? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I'll be very brief on this because we've obviously been working on China for uh, a couple of years now. and. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've managed to do the unthinkable, and that is um, sign memorandums of understanding with two critical Chinese cities. Uh, and that's only taken two years. Uh, the advisor that we had advising us at the time said it would take you at least five years of toing and froing. But thankfully, Councillor Smith and I managed to achieve that in just two years. And today, the, the, those agreements are already yielding results and credibility. Um, I don't know if it was mentioned um, that today we had a meeting with the President of the uh, Australia China Business mm. Council and um, as soon as we mentioned that we've already got two agreements, their, their eyes basically lit up because no other local government is in that fortunate position no, as, as we have. And it allows uh, us to really open a lot more doors and start more discussions about investment flow but also about cultural and educational opportunities uh, which will be overled by my colleague, uh, Councillor Smith. Um, China is a long-term project. Uh, the benefits of this uh, will not be seen uh, maybe even by the immediate generation, but will be seen by future generations who will get to enjoy the foundational work that is currently being done, Madam Mayor. China is a world of opportunities. Um, Mr Fitchett also today sent me this uh, very interesting article about what the Chinese are doing in relation to their smart city mm -hmm. uh, strategies. And um, I may have mentioned this uh, before, but uh, while we do in Australia and the rest of the world have museums that celebrate the past, China actually has technology museums that celebrate the future. They basically show you what the future looks like and um, uh, it's, it's a country that is full of innovation uh, and full of, uh, of focus on, on exactly uh, what, what the future will entail. And so I want KC to benefit from all this experience, Madam Mayor. I want us to be able to import from them that technology and know-how and export to them um, our educational and world-class uh, health facilities, which, of which we have one of only five precincts in the state here in the city of KC. And so there is a world of opportunities to do with China. Every council now that is worth their salt in terms of thinking about the future is also thinking about China and what those opportunities might bring. The world is a global village. And as Councillor Smith will tell you, the previous two trips that we have been on were by no means junks. We landed in China at 3.30 in the morning their time and we're back at work at 8 o'clock in the morning and worked solidly for four days um, covering uh, uh, about five cities. So um, it's not bad going for four days' work and for us to be able to get two economic uh, partnerships out of it is, is amazing. So I stand behind our push towards China and I stand behind uh, the money that we're investing in this regard. Council and the city of Casey in particular has now become a very sophisticated place and that's been recognised today by uh, the Honourable Ken Smith, who I might say was a former Speaker of the Victorian Parliament and has an AM um, to his name. So he knows what he's doing and he knows what he's talking about. He recognised us as a, as a sophisticated city, given some of the work that he does with other councils. And it's that reputation that we need to continue fostering and developing and, and, and enriching uh, for us to really reach for the stars in terms of our future. So. Two amazing innovations, the China strategy and our push towards a smart city, interlinked but in some ways also separate. Um, but I, I commend the new motion to the Chamber, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Aziz. Councillors, are there any questions or dissent? Do you have a question or dissent? Oh, thank you, Councillor Ablett. Um, yeah, what I'm, I'd just like to preface what I'm about to say, Madam Mayor, is, is actually, uh, in, in what I'm about to say, is actually trying to help the China engagement 
program. And um, I have an article here, which was on my computer news, where uh, Shangdu and all the technolo technology staff and the municipal people visited Holston and uh, um, Austin in Texas and presented what they do as far as smart cities and um, technology goes. So there's an opportunity there, hopefully, that they might come to Casey and present here the way they have over there. And so there was a sister city, I think they called it a, um, it's got a proper name in here, a World Sister, World Cities Culture Forum group they have, which is now in existence. I'm not sure if we're part of that. But what I, what I did want to put forward in, in um, uh, and I know we're going with a two-pronged attack in investment and trade and culture and education, and, and, and I guess a lot of that has happened uh, before our trips to China within the Chinese buying land in Australia, particularly Casey of late, and, and trade. Also culture, we have a lot of people of Chinese descent here, and our education, our, our schools and universities have had a lot of Chinese uh, people come, get educated, go back home. I think it's, it's great. Um, but I think we've reached a stage in any... Do you have a question, Councillor Ablett? Do you have a question? Yeah, would, would Councillor Aziz and, and my colleagues entertain before um, the next trip to China to encompass all the great ideas here, all the stuff that Councillor Rowe spoke about energy, all the stuff that Councillor Aziz just spoke about in a plan? So we, we sort of know what, what we're doing, uh, particularly what sort of uh, businesses are we, are we really, what sort of business are we really chasing? Uh, what do we hope to achieve specifically, and what time? What do we hope to achieve? Uh, what we've achieved so far, how we might change our approach to get a better result in some area that we're looking for, and and maybe put in some uh, barometer or or um, qualitative and quantitative uh, evidence the results of of how we're tracking. Where do we have any KPIs that we're really after? I know Councillor has just said it's a long term. Um, Venture, but I'm seeing lots of good stuff here and there in the reports. But just I'd like your question, please. Sorry, would, would, sorry, would, my, would Councillor Aziz contemplate before the next trip yep. uh, developing a, a review uh, of a, and adopting a new business plan which puts everything in its place? What we're doing, what we hope to achieve in specific areas. Yep. I know some are listed here in the report, but they're all over the place, not in one document. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ablett. Councillor Aziz, you have a question put to you. Uh, I don't have a question, but I'd like to respond. No, no, to you Councillor. had a question put to you. Sorry. Oh yeah. yes, thank you. I appreciate that, and I thank Councillor Ablett for his concerns. Yeah. And I know that he's worked with KPIs um, in the past, and I also know that um, in the times that we have spoken about China and um, and everything that we're doing there, Councillor Ablett was most supportive. So I don't take that question uh, with any malice. On the contrary. I take it as an opportunity for continuous self-improvement, which is what the city of Casey should be all about. Now, I'm actually glad that we haven't developed KPIs to this point, and I'll explain to you why. And I'll explain to you, Councillor Ablett, why. Because if we had, we would have already exceeded them. And that's not a good way to go about continuous self-improvement. Like I said, uh, in two years, we've achieved two memorandums of understanding with two key cities in China when the advice to us given by the consultant in 2017 before we had gone there is that it will take you at least five years to develop those. And so we would have had to go back every year for five years until we saw even one and in two years we've got two. So there's a KPI ticked. However, what we should be doing, and this is starting to happen now with the declustering that we're achieving in terms of the focus of our trip, and that's why we've separated cultural from economic, um, educational from business attraction. And so now we're going to be spending the same amount of money sending two councillors, but at different times of the year, in order to ensure that we adopt a more focused approach on our trip whilst we're over there. And this didn't happen before. And so that's another thing that should be noted. Now, in terms of KPIs, uh, the, the essence of it is attracting export dollars for Australia and also ensuring that we attract investment dollars for the business community to create jobs. That is as basic as I can uh, reduce it to. And so, as it takes um, time, it is uh, probably a good opportunity now for the officers to perhaps give some thought as to basically both the qualitative, and they're just as important as the quantitative, when you're dealing with China, because a lot of our dealings with China are also about relationships and trust. 
And so unless you develop that first, you're not going to get anywhere business-wise or even uh, culturally-wise. And that's essentially what Councillor Smith and I have been doing for the last couple of years on behalf of this council. So I w I'm happy to add a part six recommendation um, that council officers Uh, prepare a business plan that encapsulates our prior objectives on China and what has been achieved against them. but also our future objectives in the form of short, medium and long term. Sorry. So that's in the first part, the progress and outcomes, but in the second part, what we want to do, Madam Mayor, is articulate what we hope to achieve in the short, uh, medium and long term. Um, and by definition, time frames for those achievements where possible. I'll add that caveat in because a lot of these um, things uh, are in the hands of other people rather than in Casey's hands. But I can tell you, Councillor Ablett, Councillor Smith and I will be trying as hard as we can for our residents to get the best possible outcomes uh, as per the China strategy but also as per uh, this um, cascading document now, which will form essentially uh, the, the measurement uh, to our uh, efforts and our success over there. So, um, Councillor Ablett, are you happy with that? Yeah, um, I, I, in response to that, yeah, I am happy with that. I think it tidies it up really, really well, and I think it's very well articulated, and I think it was needed. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Councillors, um, we've got this amendment before us. Do I have leave a council for it? Now, I just want to go to Mr Fitchett. He's just got a suggestion before I pass this as leave of council. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just for the uh, purposes of clarification, now that the councillors have recommended uh, or selected dates in uh, items two and three for uh, consideration as part of the motion, um, point five uh, becomes redundant. Uh, because oh, we wondered about that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, now that those dates are nominated in parts two and three, yeah. uh, part five. So remove point five. Uh, did, didn't I say that? Remove five. You did. Smith yep. said, "Leave it in." <laughs> I it was, you, you idiot. No, no, four. No, you did. No, you, you did. Said four. No, yep. five. Yeah, so we'll take out four. item five and we'll make item six okay. number five. Sorry, we. Thank you, Mr. Fidget. And thank you, councillors. Is we taking that out? Item five? Yep. Fantastic. Thank you. So could I have leave of council? Perhaps, Councillor Ablett, you might like to agree to leave of council for these amendments or this amendment? Okay. We have that, um, that in front of us. Moved by Councillor Aziz. Second, oh, well, um, sorry. Second by Councillor Smith. Uh, do we have any dissent? Uh, we've got um, Councillor Flannery and Councillor Cristani. Uh, Councillor Flannery, did you wish to speak to your dissent? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, business and um, international investment with China. Um, over the last three years I've been in council, um, I, I've actually invited or two, uh, two millionaires, uh, one of them's a friend of mine, tried to get businesses up and running in the city of Casey, but we couldn't support them. Number one, we can hold their hand and show them where the land was, and secondly, we couldn't find the power to be able to... Uh, accommodate them to uh, run a business. Uh, there were jobs coming. Uh, one was from Bayswater, the other one was Koo we Rup. We couldn't get them into the city of Casey. I've also had uh, talks with an, uh, an Indian uh, group that wants to build a uh, cultural centre. Uh, there again, we've, uh, they want to get 20, 30, 20 to 100 acres of land. They want to have, uh, they want to have an international school. They want to bring students in from overseas. They want to uh, get, get within the city. They want to be in the city of Casey. They love the city of Casey. But there again, it's, here's where the real estate agents are. Go find the land. You know, and here we are wanting to go over to overseas to try and get investment with China and bring it back to here. And oh, I'm, just, I'm just not with it. As I said, 
you know, if we looked for the, if we looked, looked after the people on our own front doorsteps, I'd support it. But I can't support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Flannery. Um, Councillor Aziz, question. do you have a question? Question? Yeah. Um, uh, just, um, uh, Councillor Flannery, uh, two questions. One is, uh, did you uh, attempt to move a notice of motion in the chamber to support your investment aspirations? Uh, no, Councillor Aziz, I did not do that, but uh, I, I did have talks with uh, the development and economic team with, uh, unfortunately, David Wilkinson, who's no longer here, uh, and I have had talks with uh, the planning department and the development team about getting the uh, in Indian uh, group uh, trying to find up some land within uh, the Turin region or Cranbourne West region. So I've left it uh, up with the officers to be able to guide them. Uh, they've got the information. Uh, provided to them, so I'm just waiting for uh, feedback from the group to find out where we're going with that. But I can guarantee you that the uh, two people, one one of the chaps uh, that wanted to bring his uh, powder company here to make uh, uh, protein powders, he was an, uh, uh, an AO of Australia, and the other one uh, is down at Kuirup. As I said, he's a very good friend of mine, and uh, I can guarantee you they were going to bring jobs into the city of Casey. And here we are, you know, three years in, and we're still trying to bring jobs within the city of Casey. Ca which Councillor Plenty, could, I, could I invite you to involve the ward councillors on these matters? Because we might be able to assist. I'd be very happy to do that. Um, I'm going to move to Councillor Cristani. I have, a, I have a, a further question. OK. Councillor Aziz. Uh, Madam Mayor, are you aware that uh, whilst I applaud um, Councillor Flannery's efforts, valour efforts, to bring investment to the city of Casey, um, uh, it is, uh, and it, perhaps it's part of the learning curve of becoming a councillor, but it is often uh, required that uh, notices of motion in relation to the big projects are moved. That way they are actually on, on the record of the council, on gets, it, gets it on the work uh, agenda of the council officers, and also allows the council officers to report against them. So it's great to have conversations, but if you really want to move policy to bring investment to Casey, you really need to do it through a notice of motion. So I don't think the entire China strategy can be held captive to Councillor Flannery's perceptions in terms of what has occurred on those two occasions, because mm. proper protocols were not followed. So. That said, we do respect his views. Thank you, Councillor Aziz. Councillor Cristani, you had dissent. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, um, I first wanted to say that, sorry, forgive me, my back hurt yesterday. So. I just want to say I always applaud your initiatives to bring jobs and tourism into the, the city, Councillor Aziz. And I actually uh, picked my battles and supported um, the digital attendance uh, in the US. And I think therein lies my dissent in it's the country that we're dealing with. The US, I have no problem. The Ch China, oh, there. Could I, uh, Councillor Cristani, could I please ask Madam that you Mayor, point of order. address point of order. this issue? No, point of order. <coughs> Point of order. Relevance. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be brutal here. Our relevance, yeah. until, until our Commonwealth government suspends diplomatic relations with China, we have no place in this chamber to be critical of dealing with them. It really is that simple. It's an international, uh, it's an international country. It is actually one of the five members of the UN Security Council, and you don't make it to that body unless you've actually got some credentials. And uh, it is a very big country of 1.4 billion people, Councillor Kastani. We can't just ignore them. And we can't judge their uh, cultural character according to our own prism of judgment. That's really not up to us. We're talking about economic relationships. And can I repeat, the Chinese have been absolutely hospitable and have, have welcomed Casey with open arms, even though they're in the scheme of the world, we're only a small municipal government. But they have been amazing, and I just don't feel that it's appropriate for us to be standing here in the chamber judging them on culture yep. when we it's need to, entirely I need to make irrelevant, irrelevant to, to, to our point. And I do rule in your favour. And I would caution councillors, we've got very strong views about different things and I respect each and every view. But can I just say, if we're talking about being responsible for m money that we're going to spend into the future with things that we're going to do, can we also be mindful of the investment we have already made in things that we don't burn for the sake of public opinion? So I'm going to go back to Council Cristani and I'm going to ask Council Cristani, could you please present in a logical and a respectful manner? Sure, sure. Um, I didn't get to finish what I have to say first. Um, however, I'll move on. Thank um, you. Israel, sister city, we tried to get up and it's not done yet. I think there's, there's room for that. But I'm happy to say, and I will make a point here, um, that uh, there's 
two councils that went without spending a cent of ratepayers' money, and the third they're just about to go to Israel. And they have a wealth of economic um, development that could be used here. And yourself, Councillor Ziz, said that you would look at doing a um, Silicon Valley in order to, to promote jobs. And we know that they have the know-how. Anyway, um, at the time I was not um, suggested that I could go on cultural uh, exchange. It would purely be economic. And so also in that persuasion, I think that it'd be important that we do stick to economic um, economic uh, uh, benefit for the city of Casey and that it doesn't fly off into a, a dissolve and it may well be dissolve the economic case if we do go off into the culture and exactly what does that mean and how we who are we educating uh, are we educating them or are they ed educating us uh, are we just sending councillors I look I I picked my battles and I voted. I'm not done, sorry. I picked my battles and I voted for uh, to send I wasn't going to stop you, Council oh, Christine. Sorry, no, 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 it's okay. Uh, um, I picked my battles and I um, voted to send Councillor Aziz to the US and you want to go to China now. I don't think the case is strong enough. On what, on what basis? What's your point of order, Councillor Aziz? Sorry, it's, it's, it's actually a very, very disrespectful debate. No, point of order? Uh, relevance, error of fact, and that uh, lovely catch cry all uh, that you have in your powers, Madam Mayor, to rule on, on, on any point of order. It's just plain disrespectful. Like, I, I picked my battles and I've allowed you to go to the US and now you want to go to China now. Well, I would sincerely hope that um, Councillor Cristani one day makes one of these trips and realises how much hard work it really is. Uh, she's not doing me favours. I'm taking time out of my study, out of my family, uh, out of my work for the sake of our city and its future. Uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a holiday, Councillor I'm going to rule, Councillor Ziz, and I'm going to rule... Can I ask you to withdraw that, please? I'm, 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 I'm actually offended. going to rule in your favour, Councillor Ziz, and um, Councillor Cristani. I'm not, uh, sorry, I don't Madam Mayor, you... can you ask her to withdraw that very... I've been asked by Councillor Ziz to ask you to withdraw. I would ask you... Exactly what am I withdrawing? You're withdrawing the analogy that you used around um, the reason for uh, not supporting... OK. Me, uh, well, that was just a term that related to. I did still support. But I ask the you, US. To, um, are you going uh, to withdraw? Okay. Well, I'm willing to withdraw it, and Thank just you. to say that. And an apology too, please. No, I think withdraw. Oh no, I'm happy to apologise that I offended you. I'm not apologising. Thank you, Councillor Castani. I've ruled. I've just ruled. Okay. You don't have Thank to apologise. You do have to withdraw. Sure, I'm happy to withdraw that comment, but I will say, I object for the horrific human rights that has occurred by this country. That's it. We've got two dissent. Um, I am now going to ask Councillor Smith as a seconder, uh, would you like to speak? Uh, Madam Mayor, there's just one alteration we've just picked up. Thanks, yep. uh, Mr Fitcher. Uh, the, in point two, it says June 2019. We'd like to say June stroke July because it could be crossing over. Okay. It could yep. be, just I'm, to, be, I'm, just I'm to, quite to cover ourselves. Around, so, so uh, we've got, um, I'm asking for leave of absence to accept that change. Do I have leave of absence, councillors? Fantastic. Um, okay, so that's been. Um, we're going back to Councillor yep, Smith. Uh, I, I have to explain why the April trip's not happening. I've got some other things happening, personal and family issues. Um, the most notable one being the impending birth of my grandson. So, oh. due, due on the day that I should have been leaving, I, I've decided my son's very happy that I'm going to stick around, mainly because I'll be the babysitter during the, the period of hospitalisation, but um, and the dog sitter. Um, uh, <laughs> The, in relation to the music festival, um, I've spoken to councillors about it, um, maybe not in this chamber, I can't remember, uh, but the, the opportunity for some of our Casey performers to participate in that uh, at the invitation of our sister city or the Qing, of the uh, Chengdu International Sister Cities Youth Music Festival, 150 uh, nationalities, I think it says, uh, 500 performers, sorry, 500 performers from 19 countries, of which we will be one of them, and obviously the new one because we're the the most recent addition to their um, to their fold, and the opportunities for whoever is chosen um, <clears throat> to attend on behalf of the city of Casey, remembering that the land costs for that trip are completely funded by the um, Chengdu the festival. So, um, you know, the cost to council will be quite minimal. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, if the delegation could occur at the same time as that festival, that may well be <coughs> may well need to be at June. Um, we'll just play it by ear. It, it, um, but you know, I, I hear the councillor's concerns, but having been there, I've been to China a few times, um, just as many times uh, privately funded. Uh, it's, it is 
There is a fantastic culture and history and that's why I've, I've been leading the, the charge to have the culture and education part split from business investment, which is very important. But uh, I think our previous two trips, um, because we were so um, taken up with business investment ideas that we really didn't take up the opportunities uh, of culture and education. So now we can. So I thank uh, councillors for supporting that split and councillors is will ably lead that, that part of the delegation. And I hope councillors will um, accept the fact that with my history of success in arts and culture in Casey that um, rest assured I'll be working hard to achieve similar uh, success over there. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, is there any other dissenter? Are there any other questions? Just before I go to um, councillors is to sum up, could I just say that um, today was one of the examples of the very things that Councillor Flannery and Councillor Cristani and, and Councillor Ablett to some extent are asking for, and that is the work that we've done in China bring about outcomes in here in the city of Casey, and today was a prime example. We had a delegation of, of, uh, from China who want to invest here in the city of Casey, and they were so impressed with the work that we've done so far. They were so impressed with the, um, the economic uh, sister cities uh, relationship that we have and the work that we're doing. So, councillors, I just need to state that while we're asking the questions so important, we need to be open and transparent to our residents, but we also need to acknowledge the work that we've done, and today was actually a crescendo for the very work that we've been leading up to since um, five years ago when we started visiting China. So I'm going to now go to councillors is to sum up, and then we'll go to the vote. Um, Madam Mayor, I won't take much more of the Chamber's time in summing up, because I think it's all been said, but. I just want to clarify that to Councillor Kassan, when we talk about cultural, we don't mean human rights. We mean their capacity to use Bunjil Place. Uh, we mean uh, our entree into the arts um, and, and the various festivals they have over there and the export dollars that could also bring to Australia, as well as the friendships and the cultural exchanges. So that's what we mean by that. And it's a relationship we should be cultivating. Let us remember that one of the most notable opera singers in the world Xu Xin is a KC resident, and she happens to be of Chinese background, and her name is Xu Xian. No, it's not you, Councillor Ablett. I'm, <laughs> the only time I've heard you sing, you're in the bathroom. I think nothing to do with the opera. Mm. So, um, um, you know, that, that's something we ought to remember and celebrate. And I've got to say, and I'll, re I'll repeat this time and time again, when we first went to China in 2013 and we had Xu Xian with us as part of the delegation, we landed at an airport and randomly they were playing one of her records and that was just a, a magic moment so mm. you can't even you know buy these things with money so it's it's amazing so it's it's really good thank, thank you, you councillors is no, councillors no, we do have dissent so those in favor of what's before us please raise your hand um raise your hand please for those in favor of this thank you and those against thank you that is carried Councillors, we'll move on to item 8.5, and I want to preface this before, um, oh, sorry, 8.4, before I ask uh, Councillor Cristani to introduce, she did actually ask if we could bring this item forward, and I said, no, we'll skip through it and we'll be there in no time. So I do apologise for those who have waited, um, but I will now go to Councillor Cristani to uh, put this um, report forward. Thank you, Councillor Cristani. Thank you. You're, you're going to move this? Thank you. Yes, Madam Mayor. Before I get a seconder, I'd like to move with the additional dot point already prepared by the officers. I'd like to add that extra dot point on to the recommendation. It basically <coughs> entails... Sorry, um, yeah, you're going to put the recommendation there, yeah? Uh, I don't think this is the one, no. This is 8.4. Uh, 8 uh, no, this is... No, this isn't related. Are we sure we're dealing with the right... No, no. This may be related to another um, meeting. Can you give us the wording, do you think? Um, um, yeah, it's actually... I'll, got, I'll give the intent because I, they have prepared it. And it oh, OK. It deals with... Um, we'll um, just take a breather. If somebody wants to go and get a coffee, we'll just um, wait yeah, for the officers. So just wait, to... pause for a moment, Madam Mayor. I can... No, not, not a break, break. Just a... Just a... It's basically the extra dot point refers to accepting late submissions and petitions that have received up until this evening. And so that will go along with the minister to whatever recommendation that we endorse tonight. So, did you send the wording to the officers? You might the be able to recall it. The officers actually prepared amongst themselves. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
So should we maybe councillors? I'm just going to um, give you a, a five-minute break because yep. I'm sure it's been a long council. And to those in the gallery, I am so sorry for holding you up, but we do have a slight te technical difficulty. Councillors, could I encourage you to get a coffee, get a tea? Yep. And could you please be back here in five minutes? Should we have to call for a suspension? No. No. We're all good. Thank you, councillors. If we could return to our seats. Oh gosh, I don't. I sit, I sit down and go to sleep. I don't even make it to my bed sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, councillors. If we could all return to our seats, please. We have a quorum, so uh, Councillor Cristani, if I could ask you to continue. Councillors, we're considering. So, thank you. Um, I'm going to defer to Ms Frost to explain to the gallery and to fellow, my fellow councillors what's in front of us. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, our apologies just for the slight technical issue we've been having. If you could, the motion that is listed under the mover and seconder, that is the correct motion uh, for item 8.4, adoption of amendment C198 to the Casey Planning Scheme Housing Strategy Implementation. So please ignore the fact that the heading at the top, which references 
the title for item 8.5, but please be assured that the motion that follows is that related to adoption of amendment C198 to the Casey Planning Scheme. We can work with that, Ms Frost. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to um, I'm going to go back to Councillor Cristani. We've got the amended recommendation before us, councillors. Have you all had time to read it? Okay, Councillor Cristani, I'm, you're asking to move what's in front of us, That's and the me. seconder is Councillor Jackson. Would you like to introduce? Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to note that the additional dot point that added that Council notes the post panel submissions received in relation to Amendment C198 include as attachment five and forwards these to the Minister for Planning together with any additional submissions and petitions received in the past few days for consideration as part of the approval referred to in part five of this recommendation. Fantastic. Thank you, Councillor Cristani. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I arise to address the Council and Gallery this evening. As a large amendment affecting over 20,000 properties, a range of views have been heard and considered to arrive at this point where Council needs to make a decision in relation to C198. It is acknowledged that a number of submissions received throughout the process oppose aspects of the amendment. This is commonly experienced by councils preparing and implementing significant strategic policies like housing strategies. While all residents' concerns are taken seriously by council, there is a need to balance planning for our current community and our future needs, and therein lies the challenge where we are required to make some difficult decisions along the way. It is inevitable that some will be pleased with this decision tonight and others disconcerted. Through this process, we have responded to many of the concerns of submitters within the Four Oaks Ward as well as us from other wards. In particular, we propose changes that could allow further low density subdivision down to 2,000 square metre blocks where sewer was available and the land wasn't constrained by bushfire risk or had a high landscape value. This included four precincts in the Narry Warren North area. Most of these changes were supported. However, the reality remains that the planning panel did not agree with Council's proposal to rezone Precinct 9, the area around Fox Road, to allow for further subdivision. This is disappointing. For some, however, the panel of ex experts has made an independent assessment of all submissions and the material presented to it. Amendment C198 has been undertaken for some time. In fact, the early considerations predating many of our terms as councillors at least over six years ago with the first mentions of uh, this whole process. Finalising the amendment is a great step towards providing certainty to the community about housing growth and change across Casey. We are the closest we have ever been to this outcome. I recognise the nest egg, the retirement prospects that are tied up in one's land and home. The recommendation will find many will be pleased with the recommendation before us. A wider community benefit is that these changes respond well to the demand for diversity of housing as well as freeing up the availability of land where there wasn't previously a consideration. On the other hand, the maintaining of a low residential status as currently uh, sits in some areas will also give the many residents an assurance to honour their semi-rural lifestyle that they also have considered as part of their retirement. Having said all this, although this is Council's final decision on C198, there is one more step at the adoption of tonight's recommendation, and that is sending this back to the Minister who holds the final decision. If you haven't submitted, you are still able to, and it will go to, and we, we suggest you go directly to the Minister. In fact, uh, yes, that's what I've said. As I have said to many residents, this council only has the best interests of the community to gain from tonight's decision. We have done our best to weigh up all the facts and balance the needs of 20,000 households and beyond. Anyone who has gotten to know me personally knows that I aim, is, my aim is always unity with purpose, safety and security, and I know for a fact that's every councillor here. It is with this in mind that I put forward and endorse the recommendations before us tonight. I welcome my colleagues to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cristani. Are there any questions? Sorry, Councillor Jackson, have you got an are you aware? I, I do, Madam Mayor, with your indulgence. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'm sure we've all read the panel outcome, but I just wanted to highlight a few things that the panel said. And maybe from the outset, I note this is an independently constituted panel. It's not picked by a council. It's not chosen by us. This is a panel of experts chosen by the minister and its department to oversee this and make its recommendations back to council, of which we have adopted 100 per cent of their recommendations. We have not made one change to their recommendations. But the panel went on to say this, Madam Mayor. The panel said, the panel commends council for the comprehensive and strategic approaches taken in preparing the housing strategy and amendment. 
It said the amendment acknowledges that housing needs in Casey are slowly changing and supports the future of delivering more diverse housing offering in the municipality that will cater for the shifting demographics in our council. It provides clear justification for the areas identified for substantial and incremental and minimal changes and appropriate lines these with a suite of residential zones. It provides certainty about the scale of growth in the suburbs and in low density residential precincts. It ensures an adequate supply of residential land for the coming decade, which is something that is very important to all us councillors. It appropriately protects areas with identified landscape and biodiversity value and identified neighbourhood character. And finally, Madam Mayor, it appropriately directs housing growth away from areas affected by natural hazards such as flooding and bushfires. That's not our words, Madam Mayor. They are the words of the independent planning panel um, that have made the recommendation, which um, is supported by council, well, maybe supported by council tonight. But in closing, Madam Mayor, I'd just like to say this. It's the biggest amendment we've ever undertaken to council. It's no mean feat. And I just want to take a moment to thank the officers who are here who have put tireless amounts of hours and energy. I think there were only over a thousand face-to-face -face or phone call contacts or emails with the officers. That's something we've never done before. So really to the officers, thank you. Thank you for your time. It's known it's been a huge effort and we really do appreciate everything you've done on this amendment. And thank you, Councillor Jackson. Could I just echo those um, those thanks, Ms. New, Mr. Fitchett? I see Mr. Rao over there, Ms. Surlis, and a, a few people I can't see. I'm so sorry, but they've got. Sorry. Span oh, Ms. Spanos. Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry, I can't see that far. Spanos, Spanos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Ablett. Um, no, I'm sorry, I wasn't making light of it. Anybody in particular, it was just a conversation. Um, but thank you very much. Councillors, we have this before us. Are there any questions or is there any dissent? That being the case, this is, that is carried. And I want to thank all the residents here for waiting to hear this um, d debate for this report. Um, and do invite you to leave if you choose to do so. If not, we'd love to, for you to, con uh, for, to stay. We're now going to move on to item 8.7 and I call upon Councillor Aziz. To move the recommendation in my name. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, moved in count, uh, um, by Councillor Aziz and seconded by uh, Councillor Rowe. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't intend to say much. I think the report speaks for itself, except to also congratulate the officers on another sterling piece of work. Could I just ask for quiet in the gallery, please? I'm sorry. I know it's important, but it, it debates underway. Thank you. Uh, it was a similar uh, piece of, of property review that, developed, that delivered the substantial savings that we now get to enjoy in Bunjil Place. And, um, and, and it's, it's great that our council officers go through this exercise um, uh, to deliver the maximum possible benefit to our ratepayers. So congratulations to you, uh, Ms. Silas, and uh, to all your team. And we look forward to uh, some great outcomes. Thank you. And thank you, Councillor Aziz and Ms. Surlis. Thank you very much. Councillors, are there any questions or is there any, um, um, is there any dissent? There being no dissent, that is carried. Councillors, is there a mover and a second to deceive and note the record of Assembly of Councillors as listed before in your report? Moved by Councillor Saray, seconded by Councillor Rowe. Is there any dissent? No dissent, that is carried. Councillors, are there any petitions or joint letters that you wish to present? No. Councillors, we don't have a notice of motion for this evening, which is fantastic. I'm going to ask, do we have any items of urgent business? There being no items of urgent business, um, I would like to now... Councillors, that concludes the open council meeting tonight. I'd like to thank the gallery. I'd like to thank all the officers and councillors. I would now call for a mover and a seconder to move into closed council after a five minute break. So moved by Councillor Ablett, seconded by Councillor Jackson. Is there any dissent? I'm sorry, Councillor Rosario. Is there no dissent? That is carried. Thank you and have a good night, everyone. Travel home safely. <laughs>